faith, self-love. Why is self-love important? You're probably taking this course because you want to find that sweet love sensation that comes when you receive love from others. So why a lesson on self-love? Because most of the problems that you face in relationships would probably not exist if you would love yourself deeply and unconditionally. Consider the following. If you love yourself, you are enough for you. And so you don't have to be afraid of being alone or afraid of being abandoned. The love you feel for yourself will be enough. And so all the love that you get from others will just feel like a very welcome extra. If self-love is that delicious dessert, then love from others is just a cherry on top. Consider this as well. If you love yourself, you're not afraid of being rejected. And thus, you don't have to act in any other way than being fully you. And this will result in you being loved for who you truly are. Because you finally dare to show you. You don't have to act in any different way in order to get love from others. You're already satisfied with love. You have your own love. You don't have to act differently. And so you can be loved for who you truly are. If you love yourself, you enjoy your own company so much that you can still love spending time with others, but you will never be needy for their company. Which is wonderful because you won't be pushing people away or with any neediness inside you. The more you love yourself unconditionally, the easier it will be to love every other person unconditionally too. Instead of trying to change yourself and others, you'll find yourself more and more in a state of peaceful, loving acceptance. Because you love yourself and accept yourself, you will also feel more accepting towards others. A little side note here on self-acceptance is that although some have the fear, and I had too in the past, that self-acceptance would somehow lead to stagnation of any personal growth. Because if you accept yourself, then how can there be any motivation to take action? But the opposite is true because self-growth, um, learning, are all self-loving actions you can take to make your life even better without rejecting the status quo as it is now. So great, these are all benefits of self-love. Um, the benefits especially for how they affect the, the relationships with other people. The biggest benefit, however, will be, surprise, surprise, that even when you're going through rough times in your life, you'll be happy to spend every minute of your life with none other than you. Doesn't that sound wonderful? In this lesson, you will learn to let go of any possible fear of starting the self-love journey, how to cultivate self-love, three tips that will make that easy for you, and how to continue being available for your own heart. Is it hard to learn to love yourself? Is it even possible to love yourself unconditionally? Yes, it is possible and it does not need to be hard. Whether for you it's just something you read about or listen to in this video and it just clicks and you got it, or whether it's something that takes years of practice for you, 
it all depends on where you are on your journey right now. The only two things I can really say about it, the process of learning to love yourself, is that one, please don't beat yourself up when you don't get it right in one time, because you're awesome, you're capable of learning, and practice will make perfect. And two, the second thing I want to say about it is that probably the practice will be joyful from beginning to end. Are you scared to love yourself? Before we start with learning how to love ourselves, I want to address a certain fear that um, some have regarding the, the journey of self-love. And one of the test users explained it this way. I am scared to start loving myself as I don't trust it will really give me what I am looking for, love. What you say is that you don't need others when you love yourself, but there is no trust I can love myself. And when I try that, I have to go through more pain and loneliness and maybe end up living the rest of my life in pain and alone. How can I get over my fear? To get over this fear, please see that there is nothing for you to lose. It might seem that if you start on the journey of self-love, you'll miss out on love from others. But it really doesn't need to be that way. Learning to love yourself does not mean that you have to say no to love from others. If you have a desire to be loved by others, then saying no to love that comes your way or stopping to reach out to others would actually be the opposite of self-loving. So you can remain open to receiving love from others while practicing self-love. You can even be in a romantic monogamous relationship while practicing self-love. Moreover, when you learn to love yourself, you will become so much more attractive for others and thus you will have less chance of being alone. Loneliness can seem scary, especially when you, like many others, have been codependent most of your life. Have you always had someone to lean on? I want to share a personal story because I did for the first part of my life. First I had my parents to lean on, then I had my sister, then I had my boyfriends that always quickly followed each other up when I would break up with one, two weeks later I had the next. And um, I only realized that I had always been relying on others when my last monogamous relationship ended. And for the first time of my life, I would move into a house completely by myself and I would live there just, just alone. And I was scared. And it made me hang around in my ex-boyfriend's house for some days. And my parents and friends had helped me move into that other house like all the all the furniture was there, the house was ready for me to move into, but I was hanging around in my boyfriend's ex-boyfriend's house, scared to go to my own house. And after some days when I became more and more aware of what was actually keeping me there, I decided to face the fear and I went to my own house. And honestly, I thought, why haven't I done this earlier? I totally loved to have my own little palace and have everything in housekeeping completely my way. And even more important, I never knew how out of my own balance I had been from relying on others all the time. I so quickly moved into my own more balanced and graceful state just from being alone, living alone there all the time. It was, it was just, I still think about this time as a very beautiful time 
Whenever I think about this time, I'm just so happy. So yes, loneliness can be scary, but it's such a wonderful gift as well. Is the journey itself of learning how to love yourself painful? I don't think so. If there is self-hate or self-loathing inside of you, it might be triggered by starting a journey of self-love. But it was already there and you just started healing it. So if you do come across some pain inside of you while you're practicing self-love, this pain is actually equal to uh, the pain you feel when you put some disinfectant into a wound. The wound equal to the absence of self-love inside of you is what actually hurts, not the disinfectant. So self-love is here to heal you and you do not need to be afraid of healing. How to cultivate self-love. We will cultivate self-love by talking to ourselves in the most loving way we can. And aren't we talking to ourselves all day long? Don't we say things inside our own mind to ourselves like, I lost my wallet, how stupid of me. Or maybe you tell yourself, I need to get better at this. Or maybe even, I hate you. So let's make these conversations more loving. Start out with, I want to learn how to love you. You have made the decision to start to learn to love yourself more. Otherwise, you wouldn't be watching this video, right? So that's great. Why not put a hand on your heart right now and say to yourself, find your own words, something along the lines of, I have decided I want to love you more than I've ever done before. I don't know yet exactly how to do that, but I'm willing to learn. I want to make you feel loved. I want to make you feel happy. I care about you. The exact words don't matter. What matters is that you get the message across in a very genuine and loving way. So um, please put the video on pause right here and take your time to say this to your own heart and get back to me when your heart has received the message. And just as lovers like to tell each other often that they love each other, even so your heart loves it to receive your message of love time and time again. So keep sending that love. There is no limit to the amount of I love yous. Get creative. Love can be expressed in an infinite amount of ways and your heart will love it when you find more and more ways to express love. So here's a list of loving things you can say to yourself. And I want you to repeat after me. I love you exactly as you are. You are beautiful. You are so sweet. I want to be as sweet to you as I can. I love spending every minute of this life with you. Thank you for everything. I forgive you for everything of the past the present and the future. You are now forgiven already. My heart is open for you.
My heart is your home. I love all of you. You are the best. You melt me. I am here for you. Whatever happens, whoever you will become, whatever you will do, I love you. My love for you is unconditional. You are welcome. You are perfect the way you are. I accept you. I will love you through every hardship. I am here to see all of you. I am not afraid of your shadow side. I want to know you as deeply as possible. I embrace the dark within you. You light up my heart. Thank you. I love you. I want to tell you whatever you want to hear. I am looking for more ways to express my love to you and I am open to know your every desire so that I can give you even more love. I give you my heart. I surrender to loving you. I dedicate myself to you. I want you to feel loved always. And I will tell you I love you as many times as needed for you to feel my love every second of your life deeply anchored in your heart. You are important to me. I will always love you. I encourage you to use these sentences as a source of inspiration to also find your own creative ways of telling yourself that you love yourself. So please take a moment right now to come up with a minimum of three other ways 
to express love to yourself. Put your awareness in your heart space and allow yourself to feel what it does to you when you say those things to yourself. So please pause the video here and take your time. We'll now look into three tips to find even more ways to express love to yourself. Tip one, learn from how you treat others. Many people are able to love others more than they love themselves. If you are among those people, there's an opportunity here for you to start loving yourself in the same ways. How would you treat a small child? Most of us like to treat children really well. We like to comfort them, we like to say hi, we like to forgive them if they are mischievous. Um, so the question is, do you treat yourself at least as sweetly as you treat a small child? How do you treat cute animals like dogs, cats and rabbits? With animals, we often like to cuddle them for no reason at all. They don't have to be or do anything else than they are. They just have to be themselves and we love them. Can you see yourself in that same way? Can you just see yourself and say, wow, you're so cute. You don't have to be anything else. And how do you treat your best friend, lover or a loved family member? Don't you like to listen to their stories, whether they are of joy or of sorrow? Don't you like to tell them how much you appreciate them? And now the question again is, do you treat yourself the same? Do you like to listen to your own stories? Whether it's a story of joy or a story of sorrow, do you listen to yourself? Do you give yourself the attention you deserve? Do you tell yourself now and then that you appreciate yourself? Tip two, learn from how others treat you. We're going a little bit fast maybe, but there is an exercise at the end of the lesson. So scroll down for that one when you have finished uh, watching this video. And the exercise will guide you through applying this. Uh, for now, so tip two, on how others treat you and how you can learn from that. I want to share a personal story, which is when I went to Maui in 2016, I had a lover there and he used to say to me often, I will always love you. And to me at that time, that sounded a little bit ridiculous. I mean, just unbelievable, incredible in the sense of always, but the future is a mystery. How can you say something like that? How can you know that you will always love me? You might start hating me tomorrow. But I just took it as I can learn from that because I realized I never say that to myself. It felt strange to me that this man loved me more, it seemed in certain ways, than I loved myself. And so I just, tried it out to say to myself, I will always love you. And when I started saying that to myself, it started making sense. Because if I give myself unconditional love, that is undestructible. And my love for myself seems to be growing every day. So how can there be ever a time when I'm not loving myself? And now I can easily say to myself, I will always love you. I want to share as well a personal story from Jordan and I'll read it to you because I want to capture his precise words. 
Whenever I receive a compliment that I can't fully embrace, that doesn't fully resonate and feel true to me, I stop and ask myself, what is that about? Someone recently told me, I love every part of your body. My reaction was like, whoa, ah, hold up. I'm not sure I can fully receive that compliment. I asked myself, what parts of myself do I not yet love? Why don't I love these parts of myself? Can I learn to love those parts of myself? Listening to the way other people compliment you can be extremely eye-opening in regards to what is easy for you to hear and what is difficult. So besides learning from how you treat others, you can also learn from how others treat you. If others treat you in some aspect more loving than you treat you, that's a great opportunity to receive that love and learn to give it to yourself as well. Sometimes a lover might say something loving to you that you have never said to yourself. So take that as a gift and start practicing to say that to yourself. Another time you might notice that a friend accepts you more fully than you accept yourself. Again, take it as a gift and start to accepting yourself in that same way. And have you ever noticed how dogs are always happy to see you? Whenever they see you, they bark, they wig their tail. They're super happy to see you. What if you would greet yourself in that same way? I mean, just saying to yourself, I'm happy to see you again. Whenever you see yourself in the mirror or whenever you wake up with yourself. A last example. Have you ever gotten compliments that you were unable to receive? Because they sounded outrageously flattering. Well, next time, just say thanks and let it in. If that's hard, just suspend your disbelief and let it soak for a little bit. And maybe next time you'll be able to just answer, thank you, I know. <laughs> Tip three, learn from how others love each other. And finally, we can learn from how others love each other. So if you overhear a couple saying something really sweet to each other, you can start saying that sweet thing to yourself. Or when you hear a love song on the radio, you can imagine singing those words to yourself. And if this causes you to feel something along the lines of lack, envy, pain, hang in for the next section, which is on unconditional love. Embrace whatever you encounter. There are certain challenging situations which can make it feel harder to feel self-love. For example, when dealing with unhappiness, guilt, insecurity, fear, shame. So, ideally love, self-love is unconditional. And so you'll be able to say to yourself, I want to love you in whatever situation. Whatever happens, I will love you. To lovingly allow your heart to feel whatever emotion comes up without suppressing or judging is to set your heart truly free. Different situations ask for different ways of holding the space for yourself. To give you a little bit of a taste, I'll give you some examples. Um, the red line, the clue, is always the same, however, which is that love is the answer in every situation. If you did something embarrassing and you're feeling shame, hold the space for yourself, feel your emotion, feel the raging storm in your heart and tell yourself it's okay that you feel shame 
take whatever time you need. I am here for you. And I will love you all the way through it. Whatever other people might think of you, I love you deeply. You're awesome. I love the hell out of every embarrassing part of you. You're sweet. You're cute. You're perfect for me. You will always be enough for me. If you treated someone badly and you're feeling guilt, again, allow yourself to feel the emotion. Trust that the emotion will go away by itself if you just allow it the space it needs. Put a hand on your heart and say to yourself, I know you're feeling bad and I want to be here for you. You know I love you regardless of what you do. I wish only the best loving relationships for you. And whenever something else than love occurs in your relations with others, I will just try to send you all the love that your broken heart needs. I forgive you for hurting someone else. I see your innocence. I see your side of the story. And I know you did the best you could at that moment. I accept all of you. If you made a mistake at work and that cost you your job, you might feel some strong emotions. Softly say to yourself, I don't blame you. Mistakes are human. You are human and I accept every single part of you. Even when others tell you you're not good enough, you are good enough for me, always. You don't even have to ask for forgiveness. You're already forgiven. If even there is anything to forgive, since this is you and I love all of you. You making mistakes just makes you real and vulnerable. And that's amazingly beautiful. Whatever hardship happens, I believe in you. And so you see that love is always the answer to every situation. Especially in the last two situations, the examples of making a mistake and treating someone badly, you might feel as if it's appropriate to get mad at yourself, to punish yourself, to blame yourself. And that might make it increasingly challenging to get yourself into the space of self-love. So let's take a look at the next section, which is called, what if I believe I should be hard on myself? Honestly, there's no situation ever in which you should be hard on yourself. Maybe the Christian church has taught you that you are sinful and that you cannot forgive yourself, that you have to be forgiven by some outside authority. Well, here's news for you. You are not sinful and you are always able to forgive yourself fully. And maybe your parents gave you the idea that punishment is the right follow-up of bad behavior whatever bad behavior might be anyway. You don't have to be punished, ever. If you believe you did something wrong, please give yourself all the love you need to heal that wound. And maybe the school system has taught you that you need to be hard on yourself to be disciplined enough to learn things that you were actually not wanting to learn. You deserve more love than that. You deserve nothing less than love ever. There's never a reason to be hard on yourself, blame yourself or punish yourself. In contrast, everything is a reason to love yourself more. Validate your emotions. Although beliefs like I need to be hard on myself might not be real, emotions are always real. It is loving to validate whatever emotion you have and hold the space for that for yourself. So if you, for example, feel angry at yourself, let yourself be angry at yourself. Feel it, 
surrender to it and trust that negative emotions go away by themselves. You don't need to suppress them and you don't need to invalidate them. Acceptance is actually much easier and more effortless. Just give up on the fight with these negative emotions. Allow what is to be. And love yourself as best as you can while you go through these emotions. Pitfall. Judging your judgments of not enough progress. A pitfall many people encounter um, when they learn about self-love or just whatever other kind of thing in the area of personal growth or spirituality is that they judge their progress negatively. So it's normal that growth can be erratic, meaning that maybe one day you thought you learned something and the next day the same problem reappears. Or maybe this week you'll feel like you love yourself a lot and next week you feel as if you've fallen out of love. Don't judge it. Just be confident that you will learn. You are making progress. But it might be erratic growth. If you hear yourself judging, try first to not judge that. And if you did judge your judgment, try not to judge that, and so forth. If this gets a little bit confusing to you, just tell yourself the following. You can judge. You have full permission, always. And I won't judge you for judging, because I love you no matter what. Here's some more on loving the unloving part of yourself. Love the unloving you. For most people, the negative self-talk soundtrack inside their own heads is a daily reality. You might find that you hate yourself in different ways as well. Whenever you catch yourself beating yourself up again about something, whenever there's a war raging inside of you, picture yourself with a white flag, standing tall with a white flag, and tell yourself, you may not love me, and that's okay. I will love you unconditionally anyway. If you keep hating yourself for hating yourself, you're only prolonging the war. The most powerful thing you can do is to surrender to love. Be the first one to give up the fight. Be the first one to raise a white flag. I wrote a little poem on this and it goes as follows. I give my gun away to you. With white flag I stand. Open heart, open hands. This is the war I end. Shoot your bullets right through my heart and I'll have nothing left to do than just love you. Are you up for a little challenge? Let's start loving the parts of ourselves that we love the least. And those are often the parts that we're trying to change. And those are also often the parts that are the hardest to change because we might act in certain ways that even make the problem or at least what we perceive as a problem worse because we are rebelling against our own self-hate. For example, say you don't like your belly because you think you're fat. Then you might try some diets to get rid of the fat. But also you might, find, you might find yourself being even more attracted towards eating unhealthy foods because you're judging yourself all the time and there's so much negative emotion on it. And I'm not saying you shouldn't go to the gym because it might be a nice experience. But the point is that 
you need to make a change within yourself and you need to start loving and accepting yourself whether you are exercising in the gym or eating cookies. Forgive the part of yourself that you love the least. Forgive yourself for hating it. Forgive all that needs forgiveness. How do you forgive yourself? Simply by saying, I forgive you for fill in the blank. And tell yourself, I love you. I really, really love you. And especially this part of yourself, address it. For example, dear belly, I really, really love you. And you can start saying to yourself in every moment that I love you when you're eating chips. Or I love you when you're exercising. So you see that nothing about your behavior needs to change per se. Only your perspective needs to change. And while in the beginning it might feel um, meaningful to tell yourself that you forgive yourself for this part of yourself, after a while you'll find that there's just nothing to forgive anymore because you're just loving it. There are no prerequisites to loving yourself. You don't need to lose weight, look differently. You don't need to be more productive, do more voluntary work, make more money. You don't need to exercise. You don't need to treat others more nicely. None of all of that. The only thing you need to start loving yourself is to start loving yourself in every moment, whoever you are. Surround yourself with loving people. I saved this advice for almost the end of the lesson because self-love is the most powerful if you can find it only within yourself, regardless of whomever is around you and regardless of how they treat you. It does make sense, however, to ask yourself, do the people that are in my life make it harder or easier for me to love myself? Avoid having people in your life who judge you, who don't accept you for who you are, who don't respect you, who give you only conditional love. And do surround yourself with people who love you a lot, who give you compliments, who tell you that they accept you the way you are. And if you find it hard to ban certain people out of your life, at least you can ask them to not share their judgments with you and to start accepting you the way you are. Ask your heart what more it needs. Although I hope I've given you enough exercises, information and examples to skyrocket your level of self-love, there might still be some things in your own heart that need some attention. So please take a moment right now to ask your own heart, what more can I do for you to make you feel as loved as possible? Pause the video here and see what comes up. Very good. And another great question that I learned from Matt Kahn, um, you'll definitely find some videos of his in the resources section, is what words have not been said to you by others that you have always wanted to hear? Again, pause here to say the things to yourself that you have always wanted to hear. And often there are still wounds in our heart from having been treated badly or from heartbreaks. You can heal those wounds simply by bringing awareness to them, giving them attention, giving them your love. So put a hand on your heart again and ask yourself, I will do my very best to be lovingly present with whatever wants to arise. 
Is there anything that wants to be felt right now? If something comes up, hold the space for that. And you being lovingly present with it will be enough to heal the wound. So again, please pause the video here and take your time. For the sake of keeping it short, we've mainly focused on how to talk lovingly to ourselves. But of course, there are also self-loving behaviors like taking a warm bath, getting yourself a massage, going to the sauna, eating well, resting, taking yourself on a date, making art. So again, take a moment right now and ask yourself, is there something you would like me to do? Pause the video to listen to that too. And so you have asked your heart what more you can do to make it feel loved, what wants to be felt, what it wants to hear, and what it wants you to do. If nothing more comes up for now, end this lesson by saying to your heart, you are always welcome to let me know what more you need. I love to hear your desires and I love to hear what you struggle with. I am here to listen to you, to feel you, and I'm always available for you. I love you deeply. In this lesson, you learned that self-love is important for your relationships as it frees you from neediness, fear of loneliness, or lack of self-worth, so that you can be more relaxed when relating to others. That you don't need to be afraid of starting the self-love journey as you have nothing to lose by doing so and it will bring you only healing. To cultivate self-love by talking to yourself in the most loving way you can, to get creative with the way you express love to yourself and to find inspiration in how you treat others, how others treat you and how others love each other. Unconditional love to embrace whatever you encounter. To not be hard on yourself. To validate your emotions and love yourself while in emotional turmoil. To also love yourself when you're judging or unloving by being the first one to give up the fight with your mind and surrendering to love. To make loving yourself easier by surrounding yourself with loving people. To ask your heart what more it needs and to tell it you are always willing to listen to whatever comes up so that you feel safe and carried by yourself. Before we go to a really juicy lesson on how to kickstart clear communication, we'll have one more lesson to lay the necessary fundamentals for great relationships. And this lesson is on building confidence. Thank you for being here with me during this lesson and I'll see you at the next one. Have a great day.